But what is up, everybody? Shawnee D Man here, and welcome back to the channel. Hope you guys are doing great. You guys have yourselves a great week. Bring you a special video um, that I've been thinking about doing for a couple of weeks now. Uh, I just thought I'd just make it just to see what you guys thought. So this is how this this is my edition of how I would do the invasion of Geonosis. So now, now if you remember, obviously there was Star Wars. Attack of the Clones, that battle of Geonosis, and then there was um, the landing at Point Rain, uh, second battle of Geonosis in Star Wars, the Clone Wars series um, from a few years ago. Um, obviously, that's out on Disney+. Plus. If you have not seen those episodes, be sure to go check out those. Those are really good. Uh, a three-part arc that's really good but we're primarily focused on doing and talking about the landing at point rain and so and, and how if i was in charge of the grand army of the republic how would i do how would i what differences in the in the overall strategy that the republic deployed where are some changes that i would make so, like I said, this this is probably a two part series, but uh, it all depends on. Well, originally this is this was just gonna be a one part series, uh, but if you guys want me to make a second part, not part, but a uh, second part, going over like how I plan the invasion, then I'll be happy to do that. This this video is kind of like what what units that I would bring, what, what vehicles would I bring, that kind of, that kind of thing, kind of like an order of battle, uh, sort of thing, so that's what my plan is to do, uh, with this video, so, let's get into it, uh, this is probably gonna be a little lengthy, but that's okay, so, first things first, so military objectives, what was, if you remember in the show, what were the objectives? Well, Geonosis had been recaptured by the Geonosians and the Separatists. Uh, and so now the Republic, as a response, has to go back and retake the planet again. Um, so, the military objectives will probably still be the same. Capture Separatist lead leader Poggle the Lesser. Destroy all Geonosian, Geonosian droid factories and recapture the planet itself. Now, I believe, depending, I think like in, um, I guess in some, maybe, I don't think it's canon, but there are, I believe there are some books that mentioned, um, that there was a, a clone garrison left behind that may have gotten over taken by uh Geonosian forces that were hiding in the catacom in the catacombs of the planet um the if you know more about that then you know obviously you know hit that comment section so I would love to know more about that um to get that information so like I said capture Pogo Lesser destroy all Geonosian droid factories and recapture planet so let us get into it with the invasion fleet. So if I remember right, so damage you're saying now, this is what the Republic invasion fleet looked like. Um, ours is pro it's going to be similar. So, cause in, in this picture, it looks like they have one, two, three, four it looks like four venator class star destroyers and then uh looks like nine acclimator class star star starships now the part hard part about it is is that when it comes to star wars and these and these clone battles the number is very it's hard to because you, you see all these ships uh, but it's not a clear number of how many units that they're bringing on. Um, like, so for instance, for if this is me planning an invasion, we're bringing about close to 
a hundred thousand uh clone troopers it's close to a sector army but just just a few thousand under um so the invasion fleet will make up of eight class star destroyers now there isn't a separatist fleet hovering over the planet so i could you know divide these up a specific way if i want to um again i'll probably go more into that in a part two if you guys want to see a part two but and i'll and i have like specific roles that these ships will be doing seven acclimator class assault ships obviously these would be the primary uh transports for our clone army that we're bringing with us Pelta class medical frigates. Um, I don't know if I will bring these along. Well, since well, I probably would. Since there's like I said, since there's not a separatist fleet hovering over the planet, I would probably have some of these with me within the fleet. That way, they can uh, be available for immediate medical assistance um, once we begin the invasion of Geonosis. Y wing bombers. Um, their role will be primarily, you know, to strike enemy targets on the surface. Because that was one of the things watching the show, uh, landing at Point Rain, is you're seeing these these bombers come in, but there's no fighter escort. If you think about it, like in World War II, the, the B-17s would have Thunderbolt or Mustang fighter support to fend off enemy fighters and you get from a military strat standpoint you really don't see that a lot in the clone wars like like I, I i understand that it's probably separate from how in reality we would do things but there's still some some basic military concepts that to you know just make sense having bombers having fighter escorts uh but yeah so i mean their primary job would be would be their job just to bomb uh, enemy positions, provide uh, support for enemy uh, for friendly units on the ground if they need it. So now I had a hard time trying to decide between like the fighters. There's the Arc 170 and the V19 Torrent Fighter. Yeah, it really depends on where you're looking in the timeline when around this battle because you if you a few episodes I believe after landing at point rain within that same season you have the battle of Mal malister and the zillow beast uh two episodes well in the first bat in the first episode with, with the battle of malister you see y wing bombers carrying the neutron the neutron bomb but also you also see arc 170 starfighters and again you kind of see the same thing with the uh, battle of camino where Anakin leads his forces into space, and you're seeing Y bombers and Arc 170s. So I'm, I'm assuming around this time that the Arc 170s are available. Um, again, somebody in the comment section can easily correct that for me, uh, if whether that's is that the case or not. So I, I'm going off the census and the way these episodes are that we have arc 170s available and their role will be to number one uh provide fighter escort to, with the bombers and also perform aerial recon of key enemy locations on the planet as well just for future planning and future attacks on separate strongholds on the planet all right so we got our invasion fleet out the way Let's get into vehicle support. We got a wide variety of, of vehicles that we're going to be using. So obviously, first up, we will be using the lat gunships, of course, for transportation. Uh, and then these also will provide uh, support as well. Uh, I mean, in, in the show, you see the two. You see like the different variants. Some have the ball turrets. And then some don't. We obviously will have the ball turrets and the rocket launchers. You don't really see them use the uh, the rocket the missile launchers at the top very often in the show. 
Uh, but their job would be obviously to bring in troops, evacuate troops, and provide, uh, you know, some close air support. Obviously, we're bringing in the ATTEs, uh, our primary tank units. Um, in the show, they come in the first wave. I will probably do the same thing, but I'll go more in depth into part two uh, in regards to that. Bark speeders. Um, these would primarily be for reconnaissance. Because um, once we make our initial landing and make our initial push towards the droid uh, factory and, and the droid uh, shield array, once that's taken care of, we'll have bark speeders available for, again, recon and trying to locate any other separatist forces. We'll also have a four command center that will be obviously placed behind the lines to coordinate with the with our uh, our clone leadership to make sure everybody's on the same page. And you know, I, I really, I really think I really like that. I wish we see more of that. Now I remember playing uh, Star Wars Battlefront, like the old the OG Battlefront, and you go to the Battle of Geonosis, and that's on the planet, that's on the map, and that's really cool. I've always loved this this concept of this four command center uh, is very cool design we'll also have clone turbo tanks um these will come after the uh initial waves once we secure a landing zone and start making a push towards the shield generator and the main droid factory we'll bring these in um to provide some support but also be used as kind of a command structure that would be in communication with the uh four command center obviously we'll have some artillery and some anti-tank cannons available these are really cool designs and that's primarily what would be their role is to provide artillery support and anti-tank support as well now we're getting ready to wrap up this, so we're gonna get into the clone units. I, I, I it took me a while to really decide because if you in the show, you had the five hundred first, and you had the two hundred twelfth tac battalion, and then you had Kiata Mooney's kind of like flamethrower special forces kind of clone troopers. They don't really have a a designation. Um, it's not the Galactic Marines, of course, but it took me a while to try to figure out what units I wanted to use. So I don't know if you'll be surprised about the units I, would, I chose, but I think I think it'll make sense for at least on my end of why I would choose these guys. So the first up that we have, we'll have about maybe three squads of clone commandos. Uh, make two at the most. It really depends on reconnaissance and and things like that. But the plan would be for these two squads of clone command commandos to kind of do what Ahsoka and Barriss Offy did in Episode Two of the Second Battle of Genosis, where they kind of infiltrate the factory and destroy from within. That's kind of what their roles will be uh, for this particular mission as well. Get in. Uh, and try to blow up the factory from within that and also take down this droid fact uh shield array but that could be on a different uh a different thing as well we'll have about three arc troopers um it doesn't really necessarily state on how many arc troopers you can have with you i mean if you remember like in the uh og star wars clone wars series you had like the battle of uh Unilist. You had like a whole like four or five arc troopers on a mission to infiltrate the city. So three is not the, out the realm of possibility. And each one is going to be assigned to the three clone units that we have with us for the battle. So first up, we have the Ninth Assault Corps, which was led by uh, Luminara Unduli and Master Yoda. Obviously, you see them here, but they are also at the Battle of... Kashyyyk, the second battle of Geonosis in the show. Um, they were around when they captured New Gunray in season one of Star Wars The Clone Wars. Uh, 
and it, it's changed too because the fort it, originally it was the 41st elite corps but now it's changed to the 34 the 41st stormtrooper legion i believe um uh, i believe so but the, the the 41st elite corps is still gonna be within the main structure of the ninth assault corps so we this is who we would have this is more of our uh these are the reinforcements that we will bring in after we make our initial landing on geonosis that's what these guys would come in and these guys would kind of be like the main assault force for our capture of geonosis next we have the 21st nova corps these guys the galactic marines will be the initial waves of attackers towards the second during the second battle of geonosis they will be the ones that make the initial landing make the initial push clear landing zones um they, they're just suited for that kind of role in my opinion if you think about the world war ii style of marines the the island hopping peleliu iwo jima okinawa the, the these guys job is to land hit hard and create a buffer zone for us to bring in our transports and reinforcements so that's would be their primary job would be that um and then once we have the ninth assault corps land they'll take over we'll pull the 21st back and obviously we could probably still use them in some aspects in some position depending on what the needs look like last but not least we'll have the 91st recon corps these guys will come in afterwards and kind of uh recon the area uh during the battle and after just to make sure we have kind of capture all essential points of interest for us during the second battle um and so they'll be the last guys to wrap things up before we finish up the operation for the second battle of geonosis so that'll be the, the thought process pro process with that so these are the units that you would see this is how the order of battle that i've set up um for a second battle of geonosis and and like i said if you guys you know want me to do a part two to go more in depth and talk about how i would do it and things like that what's the thought process behind it and things like that i'd be more than happy to just hit that like and subscribe button comment below uh tell me what you guys think this was just a random video i just thought about making i was just like eh, i'll just make a video about that because uh, i've been watching a lot of star wars stuff lately and so it just made a lot of sense to like i'll just make a random video like this and see what, what see what you guys think um but yeah, I I think I enjoyed playing, you know, thinking about this and planning this out. But other than that, you guys know the drill. Like I said before, hit that like and subscribe button, comment below, and I'll see you guys in the next video. See ya.